Limited edition stuffs are always a treat to get your hands on. The pleasure of owning something that might not be produced in the future is what makes this keyboard hobby quite appealing. But is this limited edition keyboard any good? Today we are going to find out how the ACO 3068 V2 Year of the Ox Edition fares out in the long run. And let's go! I think Akko doesn't need any more separate introduction these days. They have been taking the keyboard world by storm with their amazing value CS switches, great quality keycap sets and of course their boards. This specific board has been launched in order to commemorate the zodiac sign of the Chinese New Year 2021, the Ox. The only other board I have seen earlier commemorating the Chinese New Year is the Ducky Year of the Rat edition. Why am I talking about Ducky here? Just like Ducky's Year of the Rat edition, Akko 3068V2 is the first hospitable keyboard ever launched by Akko. And this board was launched for $86. US Everything about this board matches the Year of the Ox theme. From the box to the keycaps and even the cable. Not gonna lie, I really like this colorway. So let's take a quick glance about the key features of this board. This is your standard 65% layout with dice of JDA profile keycaps, 3-pin hot swappable PCB, full RGB with Bluetooth 5.0 connectivity and comes with Akko CS switches. The one I have here has the Akko CS Rose Red switches. I have been using this board for quite some time and to be specific, I got this board in and around July 2021 and used that on rotation with many other boards that I own. So uh, this is going to be more of a long term experience sharing from my end. In terms of build, it's actually pretty solid. This has a maroon colored ABS plastic case with two stitch adjustable fits at the bottom and a slider to turn on or turn off the Bluetooth mode. It weighs around 0.63 kg. Now onto the keycaps. This is a JDA profile dice up PBT keycaps. This is a bit unconventional keycap profile, uh, more like the sculpted OEM profile and here is a comparison among the popular keycap profiles. Uh, these keycaps are quite thick at around 1.5mm. In terms of aesthetics, these are beautiful looking keycaps to be honest and it blends in perfectly with the case color. In alignment with the theme, Akko went through these fonts which would confuse the hell out of everyone. I mean, uh, yeah, it's very confusing to be honest. My only gripe? At full RGB brightness, the RGB seems to bleed through the top of the keycaps which is a bit annoying to me. The keyboard has full RGB with not facing switch orientation uh, which is pretty damn bright. But there is no way to control them via software or so. So you will have to resort to 17 RGB modes that came with the board. And here is a quick demonstration on how they look. So as I said, there is no software, so there is no way to remap the keys, edit the secondary layer or control the RGB. Uh, as is the 65% keyboard, yeah, I think that's a bit of a bummer. Then again, there are some important hotkeys assigned to the secondary layer. But alongside that, this board has your win key log, NKRO, 1000Hz polling rate over the wire mode, and ways to set up macro without any software, and you can refer to the manual for that. Another neat feature of this board is a Bluetooth connectivity. Uh, it rocks in about 1800 mAh battery and has Bluetooth 5.1 connectivity. Uh, in my daily usage, it has been quite decent, especially in the workplace. And this board lasts quite a bit on Bluetooth mode. But uh, if you are into gaming, the Bluetooth mode is not recommended. Now come to the key part of the board, the switches. This board comes in three switch variants. Akko CS Rose Red, Matcher Green and Ocean Blue. And mine came with Akko Rose Reds. Akko CS switches are manufactured in collaboration with KTT and they are too damn good. Trust me, they are simply the king of the budget switches at only $10 for 45 switches. And I have been using all these switches for quite some time and I'm loving it. Oh by the way, don't forget to sub to my channel as I'm working on a comprehensive Akko CS switches guide starting from the first gen up to the last jelly switches. So don't forget.
CS Rosred is a linear switch with 43 gram of actuation force, 55 gram of bottom out force and comes with 50 mm of progressive springs. These are pretty damn smooth at stock and even after the lubing, they produce a very soft, deep sound signature at bottom up. I really like this switch a lot. You'll actually hear how good this sound during the sound test. Now coming on to the main feature of this board, hot swappability. This board has 3-pin hot swappable PCB and comes with gator on hot swap sockets. That means you can fit in all 3-pin MX style switches out there and in case of 5-pin switches you will have to cut the plastic leg. And you will be able to try out different switches down the line if you don't like the stock switches or you need to replace the faulty one. The stabilizers are plate mounted and comes in factory looped but unclipped. So uh, with all this, how does it both sound at stock? So let's take a quick look into it. The steps are quite rattling and the lack of any dampening materials creates a lot of hollow sound. But as this board is hot swappable, it is possible to fix all these issues if you are willing to spend a bit more time. So this section of the video is all about tuning the board to make it better. First I remove the top frame, then remove all the switches. Then afterwards, remove the top 3 screws at the top of the plate and the board is completely disassembled. As usual, firstly, I took care of the stabilizers, uh, clipped the extra legs, then lubed it with Crytox and dielectric grease. Uh, so I had a hard time balancing the spacebar stab wear. So finally, I had to resort to the plumber's mod. Plumber's mod is basically you will put in a Teflon tape on each end of the stab wear, lube it with grease, and then put it back in the stab housing, and voila, the ticket is gone. I did also put in the stab pads, but you can also resort to the bandit mod. Next up, easy to do yet the most effective, the Tempest Tape Mod and P4 Mod. I just put in two layers of surgical tape at the back of the PCB. This helps in isolating the case sound and gives out a better sound signature at bottom out of switches. Plus, I put in a layer of P foam on top of the PCB for the sweet creamy poppy sounds. As you can see there are no dampening materials used and the case is quite hollow. To fix that, I wanted to put in two layer combo of Evafoam and Neoprene and felt dampener between PCB and plate. But then putting back the board was an absolute nightmare. Not that there was an enough space, but for some reason the board wasn't fitting back in. My understanding is there are no screws at the bottom of the plate to hold it to the case. So finally I gave up and only resorted to putting in thin layer of foam instead of the case and call it a day. Then I looped in the CS Rose Red switches with Crytox 205 grade 0. With all that being done, let's see how this board sounds now. It's way better than my expectation. The board sounds actually amazing. Switches are too damn smooth and I had a blast in my day-to-day -day usage. Now coming on to conclusion, should you even buy it? And in my opinion, yes. Only if you are into collecting unique boards, you really really like this colorway and you need a board that has Bluetooth connection. 
I mean, although if it is out of stock from Akko website, it is still available in various other places for less than its asking price, like in our country Bangladesh, around uh, between 6500 or 75 US dollar. Even if you get it, you gotta spend some time to make it even better. I mean, let's be honest, there are some great alternatives at this price point. For example, Akko's later iteration of 3068, like 306 the cinema roll or 3068B comes with 5 pin hot swappable PCB, superior TTC hot swap sockets, noise dampening phones in PCB plate and in the case, triple mode, better keycaps, working software and much more for the same price. Outside of Akko, there is FLE Sports F12 available for even cheaper price. Um, that also has a 5 pin hot swappable PCB, double shot PVT keycap, tri mode, better dampening, and very superior steps. Or even you can restart with the custom route with the kits like TM680, Faker68, and make your own dessert board. I mean, at this point, there are some pretty good options out there. So I'm gonna cover all of this eventually in my channel, so don't forget to subscribe. Modding this was a really interesting project. And it made me realize one thing, not all hot swappable boards are that easy to mod. So I think that wraps it up for today. Uh, it was a long video but hopefully you're gonna like it. If so, please do drop a sub to the channel, share your thoughts in the comment section. Uh, it, it took me a long time to make this video. And the next video is going to be about my favorite 10 killers keyboard of 2021. And it's also the best TKL under $65 which is way, way better than so-called branded pre-built keyboards at $100 or even more. Can you guess which board I'm talking about? So let me know in the comment section. So till the next video, bye bye and have a great day.